one. Seems like you guys like these videos, so I'm gonna do another one. This video is of my own representation of Duck the Great Western Engine. Duck is one of my favorite characters from the original television series. Unfortunately, he was one of the ones that was forgotten about come the hit era. However, come 2013, he returned via the Brenner era. Man, that was a great moment. Also a great moment was that Bachman, in a complete twist of coincidence, released a model of Duck for HO00. I actually still have mine that I got a while back from H&R Trains, though the dude definitely has had a rough time. It'll be an interesting project to undertake in repairing slash modifying it. However, our focus for today is his Railway Series counterpart. The base model is a Bachmann 5700 pannier tank, originally numbered 7788, an Armstrong Whitworth locomotive built in December of 1930. But conveniently, this model didn't have the brass safety bonnets, like the real ones were fitted with. This model turned out to be my last purchase from Hattons prior to the company shutting down, being that I purchased it in December of 2022. Rest in peace, Hattons. The 5700 Duck is based on, um, in the books, is number 5741, which was a part of the first batch of 50 5700s built between January and April of 1929. These ones were constructed at North British Locomotive Works of Glasgow in Scotland, Aye. being fitted with painted safety bonnets rather than polished brass ones. They were also fitted with the original style cab with circular windows. Later batches, starting with the number 8750, would have the newer style cab with square-shaped windows. Obviously, the former was what Duck was based on. So, that was a natural choice, and good job I managed to nab this one before it was netted by someone else. Some of you have probably noticed that the front of the side tanks is actually not in the same green as the sides of them, into, or in fact black, like the smoke box. You're probably asking me, well, why didn't you paint them green like the rest of the engine? In fact, why didn't you paint the engine in the first place? Well, simply because I feel the black fronts look better, in my opinion. A little bit more, they're more aesthetic. I mean, if you look at one of the reference photos of one of the surviving 5700s, that black front of the side tanks, it's common on pretty much all of them, unless they're in a different livery, like in National Coal Board, sense. or even the Railway Children example over in Keithley. But I like it this way better, it, and it makes it a little different compared to other duck customs out there. Alright, so they arrived. The items I was looking for. Now, I've, I've worked with number decals before, as you've seen on the previous video on Rosie, the USATCS 100. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the number plates. Now the number plates are these guys right here. They're edged brass. I got them from box transfers. And they're the exact number that duck is, number 5741. And you can get these exact from Fox Transfers. And this is crucial because you don't have to wait several weeks before they arrive because they have to cast them, they have to do the, the brass castings first. No. Well, in the case of these, I only have to wait about two weeks, so. 
Once you cut them out though, make sure you file them down so that you get rid of the flash from the tops and bottoms of them. Not exactly level with over, with overlaying the nameplate, but once the weathering is applied, it should really matter. Good news about the paper about this sheet is that it has plenty of deep, plenty of numbers, so that if a certain 1400 auto tank comes around. Buy the same exact pizza decals in this front end. Now for applying them. This is the fun part. In terms of applying water slide decals, I have one word patience. It's okay to take your time with this. Just be careful not to mess up the decals themselves, as once off the backing, they are incredibly fragile. In fact, during this, I had to replace the one on the front of the engine because it slipped off and became brittle. It basically just disintegrated. Once the decals were applied to the model, I took it out back and sprayed it with a clear coat. This seals the decals onto the model, preventing them from getting damaged by what I'm about to do next. The Tamiya kits do come with a uh, foam applicator, but the reason why I'm using this applicator instead is because those applicators are so fragile. Uh, you use them for a while and they'll break, so... Since the Tamiya kits are essentially, well in the words of Kudak 888, they're essentially makeup kits. I got a uh, pack of makeup brushes like this one. And as you can see, it works okay. That was interesting on this side because there are footsteps there. So we'll go to the back now. Alright, I'm not getting enough onto the buffer beam. Take it out of camera. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now for the coal bunker. Since after I weather this, I'm going to actually put some real coal in the back deck there. As a precaution to this method. some real coal in it. So I'm also going to brush some of that onto the bottle. For the weathering, I went for a mid-wear kind of look. Not too dirty, not too dirty, but still decently used. I mean, he's got a branch line to run, so it makes sense. And with that, here is Duck. Okay, so one thing that's a little unique from the rest of the models is that this 5700 pannier tank model that I have here, this is actually the third bottle that I own 
that comes DCC fitted. This was another simple model to customize, but one that still had a fair degree of challenge to it. It's a good beginner model, too. I recommend anyone who wants to have a go at this, try it out for yourselves. And see what you can come up with in terms of making your own custom duck. See you next time.